you doing? My name's Brian. And welcome to season, I don't know, th two or three of Late TV here on YouTube. Uh, trying to do a few things different this year. One of them changed location. So here I'm out back at my parents' house in their lower back porch, I guess is the best way to say it. And then there's the stuff out behind me. So for work, we've been reading this Orbiting the Giant Hairball book. Uh, it's interesting in that it's a, it's a reading assignment. And if you read this book, uh, you'll understand how ironic that is. But most of the way through it, um, I will say that of all the books we've read, uh, we started with Who Moved My Cheese about a year, year and a half ago. Uh, we've read Dave Ramsey's Entree Leadership. We've read um, the, the Question Behind the Question, which was pretty good. This is, um, this is the first book since Who Moved My Cheese. This is like the fifth or sixth book we've read that really speaks to me. It, it really is, it's almost like I wrote it, it especially if I let my creative side uh, loose uh, on a, a bit more than I do. Uh, being a computer science background, I'm kind of really linear about certain things, but what the way my mind works isn't linear. So it's a bit of an irony, a bit of a contradiction, a bit of a paradox. So, Orbiting the Giant Hairball by George McKin Gordon McKenzie, sorry, not George. It's very interesting. The hairball is essentially anything that kind of constricts you, that confines you, that makes you conform. Uh, the idea being you can't really get away from these things. There are certain boundaries and rules in society even, but the more that grows, the larger that that becomes, the more people entraps and enslaves really. And unless they're able to express themselves, to really reach out and know who they are and, and contribute in extremely meaningful ways to themselves, so the idea is you need to orbit these things and you actually create your own hairball with your own rules and your own regulations and your own limitations or believing you have such things. And the more you believe in those, the bigger your own personal hairball goes because it's gross. So then you're a hairball orbiting around some corporate hairball, which is orbiting around some governmental hairball, which is orbiting around some other world known hairball. So, but the idea is to be aware of that and be aware of your own self limitations that you might be imposing and also be aware that of influence you may have with others. You don't want to uh, take your limitations and impose them on someone else and then set them aside and have them their own limitations that aren't theirs, they're yours. So being aware, especially as a manager or as a leader, which is more important than managing, you want to really find the inner core of people and what they do and what really strive what they really strive to do, what really drives them, what really motivates them, and let that explode and just kind of get out of the way, as opposed to saying, no, you can't do this, no, you can't do that, or I need you this. So uh, my favorite chapter so far, and I'm about, I only have a handful of chapters left, is uh, Introducing Your Brain, where they have the brain is almost like a picture of a butterfly. It's got great illustrations in it, I think, that are just... You know, they're better than I can draw, but they look like they're drawn by a you know, third grader or something. And, you know, how we have this creative side of the brain, and we have this very analytical side of the brain, and many times the analytical side wants to shut the creative side up, or the spiritual side, many times. And sounds like, like, like I'm driving by, someone's going on uh, the road back there. And, anyway, so this book, if you haven't read it, I highly encourage you to read it. Uh, this was just to be an introductory video, I'm on the, the pyramid and the plum tree, it's also one of the few books I've ever had that I can literally finish a chapter, put it down three days, four days later, a week later, two weeks later, pick it up and go right back to where I was. I know exactly where I was when I, when I start, when I pick it up. I don't need a bookmark, which is usually I have to have a bookmark. In fact, sometimes I have to have a bookmark that says which side, which chapter, are, or I always have to finish a page so that I'm always starting on the left hand side or finish a chapter so the bookmark's always between a chapter and mark. Uh, so, yeah, that's how obsessive I am sometimes with, with reading, to know where I was, because I hate reading the same thing over again when I just read it. As, now, granted, I've read some books more than once, but uh, when I just read yesterday, I don't want to go from where I am and, and set my brain. This one, I don't have that problem. I'll go, uh, there every once in a while, I'll start, oh, yeah, I did this, and I'll skip through three, oh, there's where I am. And uh, it's also a book I want to read constantly. I basically just want to read it and then put it that, and then maybe go a month and then pick it up again and read you know, maybe a chapter a day, maybe two chapters a day. They're very small chapters uh, that goes quickly. There's lights, like I said, lots of great illustrations. So here's the the pyramid, 
the plum tree, plum tree growing on the pyramid. I don't know if that camera can pick that up. But anyway, great book. I encourage you, anybody, to, anybody and everybody to read this. I'm not going to say require. I highly encourage. At least read it. See if your mind works like me. For me, this is, I don't know if it's my INTJ coming out. I don't know if it's the indeterminate side coming out a little bit more with this book. But this is great. So, all right. Thanks for stopping by. And please subscribe. Thank you. Mm -hmm.